Uh, there's a lot of discussion about psychedelics these days in the world. Um, in my field uh, that I teach uh, graduate students in a psychology, lots of discussion happening about psychedelics and their potential mental health benefits. And of course, in, in, a, in, the, in the case of sort of spiritual pursuits and um, such things, psychedelics have have been talked about and utilized, you know, for a long, 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 long time, um, much longer than all of us have been around. And and just to say kind of up front, um, before I launch into what I wanted to share, that I'm not really a proponent of psychedelics. Uh, I'm not an opponent either. Um, I had a brief period in my very early life of experimenting. Um, didn't last very long, probably less than a year when I was, I don't know, 19 or 20. Um, I'm thinking about a, a couple of different examples to highlight what I want to say about it and then launch off from there. But one friend of mine who um, has done a lot of exploration of psychedelics has taken quite a lot of this very potent psychedelic I've never taken before. And so it's kind of amazing. It's like, you know, here you are, you're in your life, and then you take this substance and literally like two minutes later, you're just seeing God. Okay. And uh, whenever I hear such things, it's sort of like, well, that's interesting. And, um, but of course we're seeing God right now. So, <laughs> so what's the difference? Um, I'll, I'll come back to that point though. Um, then another person very dear to me, um, had, uh, uh, a journey with a substance, um, not long ago. And in this experience, they went from, if you will, kind of ordinary reality of the reality we find ourselves seemingly living in, right? Um, all this stuff, you know, the stuff of our lives. And we're taken to into a space uh, where essentially the world, as she knew it, kind of dissolved and what was there seemingly was just this undivided, fluid, um, radiant uh, divinity, basically. That everything was seen as this divine sort of flow, this seamless whole. Um, of course, many of the things I talk about, right? For those who know my work. Um, and, you know, as is often the case with people that take psychedelics, and this is kind of going to getting to the point that I want to dive into with you. There seems to be this huge dichotomy often between ordinary, if you will, reality, and then what seems to get catalyzed by taking certain substances under certain circumstances, not always for people, right? All sorts of things can happen under the influence of psychedelics that don't necessarily have to do with the things I talk about, but... Um, Certainly, even in the whole world of psychology research, looking at psychedelics and their potential utility, one of the things that tends to stand out when you look at two kind of experiences that seem to be catalyzing a lot of the transformation people are, A, experiences of self-transcendence and experiences of awe and wonder and kind of the combination of the two that often seem to get catalyzed by, by, by certain substances. So... But what is accessed on those substances in terms of seeing like my friends, you know, seeing that this is all this divinity that I share those two experiences with. But there's just one thing here and it's pure divinity, pure miracle, and there's no division anywhere. There's, I'm not going to say there's no need to take a psychedelic to see that, but maybe for some people that that becomes like, that's a catalyst for them that, I don't know maybe they might not otherwise see that. But what I want to kind of emphasize right now is that that reality that seems to get opened up under certain circumstances, like taking sub substances of one kind or another, is exactly what's here right now. It is exactly what's here right now, and that's what I want to explore with you, okay?
And interestingly, and I think for myself, importantly, it's here without having to, in a sense, kind of suppress ordinary, if you will, the ordinary perspective. Because they're one and the same thing, ultimately. I've talked about this little metaphor a couple of times in the past, and I'm going to share it now, which is like, if you just kind of imagine um, like a, a, a rheostat switch, you know, like a light switch, you know, where you can turn it all the way to the what bright or all the way dim, right? So it's got like a, like a circle and you can move it all this way or move it all the way this way. So imagine at one end of the, the switch, the rheostat switch, you've got it all the way over here and you're in the world, this world of multiplicity, this world of all this incredible elaboration and complexity and the diversity of phenomena and all these seemingly different disparate parts and pieces, right? In complex interrelationship with one another. This is our life, the complexity, the seeming complexity of human existence, right? A world, you know, here in the US, like the complexity of these political discussions and elections coming up and all the different ideas swirling around about that. And um, I mean, that's just one thing, right? It's getting a lot of attention, you know, collectively, but, um, and the complexity of our, of our lives and our work and our passions and our relationships and dealing with the stuff of life, keeping ourselves healthy and as much as we can and um, sort of sorting our way through life, figuring our way out through life, navigating life. I mean, this unbelievable complexity, isn't it? And all the ways this world over here on one side of the dial seems to be a world consisting of all this seemingly describable stuff, right? Again, that is in complex interrelationship. We could call that one side of the dial, the elaborated world, okay? Now, what's interesting, just to come back for a quick second to the, the pharmaceuticals, <laughs> is that, um, and we don't really understand this near, nearly you know, as much as I think we might at some point in terms of some of the neurobiology of what's going on, say with the brain. I mean, it, it, we'll see how all that unfolds. But one, one, I think, thing that seems to be happening, however it might be happening, is that a lot of the interpretive frameworks under certain circumstances seem like they get kind of suppressed by these substances. It's like they get kind of shut off. It's like the woman, Jill Bolte Taylor, who had a stroke and all of her capacity from a brain standpoint to interpret the world, which is went offline. And what she was left with is what I would call the other side of the dial, which can be experienced sometimes under the influence of certain drugs. And that other side of the dial is what we could call the unelaborated world. It's a singular world. It's an undivided world. It's utterly free of elaboration, utterly free of ideas, free of complexity. When you're all the way over on this side, if you will, of the dial that I'm speaking about metaphorically. We could call it the wordless world. And that wordless world that's free of all elaboration, that tra transcends all the ideas and all the complexities and all the things that seem to be here and reveals a world that's free of things, that's free of it's free of stuff. It's it's free of any. Um, any anything resolvable as being a thing that's how free it is of 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 um of division because there's no things how could there be division because a division is separates one thing from another thing and this other side of the dial we could say there's just being
So here's what's so remarkable is that right now, right here are both sides of that dial. It just depends on what side of the dial is being emphasized. And I'm going to take a little time to go over to this side of the dial for a moment together with you and explore it. So here's all the stuff that's happening, right? Like we haven't, we ha we're not suppressing any of the complexity. It's all here, the world of form, the world of stuff, the world of things, people, places, and things, right? Here it is. It's just unbelievable, right? The magical display of life. And, and each seeming part of it is different and unique, right? Each little pixel in the field of experience is different, one from the next. Each little flavor of life, you know, from moment to moment is different and distinct and unique, isn't it? Each thought is distinct, each emotion, each sensation. And this is all the world of difference, right? And we're experiencing that right now. Right now, we're experiencing that, that sense of that. We can experience the sense of all of that. You could feel, for example, in a state that you might describe as calm and relaxed and at ease. And that might be a kind of, feels like a sort of primary flavor of the moment. Or you might feel kind of upset about something or agitated or frustrated. or And then that would be a very, very different flavor, wouldn't it? And everything in between, right? So here we are, just this constant flow, ever-changing of all these different um, aspects, you could say, and textures and qualities and flavors of life. That's over here on this side of the dial. And here we are feeling all of that in one sense, right? Just right now. Now, as I often do, let's just take a moment and tune into what we could say is most fundamental about all of this, all of this diversity, all of this complexity. And that is that it's here, right? So now we're, we're, we're starting to move the dial over. We're not emphasizing merely how everything seems to be descriptively, which is fine to do, but we're just playing with moving the dial over and noticing, wow, it just is. <laughs> if I feel calm, I can describe it. Now I'm back over here. I feel really calm. Now just notice calmness just is. Or you feel really upset about something. Now you're back in the description. Then you come back to, but, but upset, that description just is. That's the beingness of it, right? It just is. The moment simply is. No matter how the moment's being described over here on one side of the dial, it simply is. And then we're moving over to this unelaborated side of the dial. It simply is. You feel that? Here is the moment, no matter how it's being described. And the descriptions are constantly changing, aren't they? Just flux and flow of experiences. But the being is rock solid unmoving, always being. You feel that? The moment always is. It always looks different over on this side of the dial, but it always is over on this side of the dial. Just is. Unelaborated being. No complexity whatsoever in a sense. It just is. Feel that? Here is this ocean, you know, I'll use my favorite metaphor for a moment. Here's the ocean of being, the ocean of life, the ocean of this reality, okay? If you look, you know, where I live, I look out and see the Pacific Ocean, right? And when I look at that body of water, I don't see a multitude of bodies of water. I see one body of water, don't I? Right? There's one ocean, 
that I'm looking at when I look out at the Pacific Ocean. Now that ocean, now I'm talking about the watery ocean, is alive. It's very dynamic. Sometimes it's relatively calm and placid, but sometimes it's very tumultuous, but in you know, a whole range of ways it could be moving in its aliveness, the ocean. But what does it do? In its aliveness, it creates what we call waves, doesn't it? Now, when we look at the waves and we can see them as these seemingly autonomous things that are separate from the ocean, we can go, oh, see that wave over there? Look how, look at that wave, the way it's rolling into shore. And oh my God, look at it crash into this other wave, <laughs> right? Or look at how those waves are like dancing together and like kind of merging together and then apart and merging together and apart. So this is over here on this side of the dial, right? Where now we're describing the waves and what they're like. And then we can look again and we can go, wow, there's just an ocean of existence. Now we're over here, just this ocean of existence, the ocean of being, the ocean of life that is alive. It's life. It's alive. And in its liveliness, it, it gives rise to what it gives rise to, the wave-like things that we call experience and perception and the world, right? That's its movement as all of this stuff over here, all of the complexity. So this simple being, this vast, boundless, undivided being, moving in its dynamism as all this complexity and all this stuff, you see? So we have simultaneously all the elaboration, which we think of as the complexity of our life, you know, including relationships and paying taxes and paying the bills and and all of it is what? in its essence, we could say, in its fundament, pure being. There's just the ocean of being. Unelaborated, simple, always here. One thing, not a multitude of things, one thing. The ocean, the Pacific Ocean is not a multitude of things. It's one body of water, isn't it? This life is one body of life. There's no pieces in the life. But this one body of life, boundless life, appears as stuff, as waves. Right? You see, there's no dichotomy. It just depends which side of the dial are you emphasizing. All the stuff, which is fine. I mean, I love stuff. I love playing with stuff and relationship and meeting with all of you. And, you know, here we all are, all these different people gathered together on Zoom, you know, and having a conversation and an inquiry together. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And what is it all in its basis? What is all of this stuff made of? What are all the waves made of? What is my happiness and my sorrow made of those waves? They're made of this water of being, of life, aren't they? Now I'm over here on this side of the dial, feeling this singularity. But there's just one thing here. Call it whatever you want. There's no word for it. When my friend who took this drug, MEO DMT, which I've never taken, it was like five minutes, you're just seeing God. And it's like, okay, here, I'm going to give you nothing, <laughs> no drug. Boom, that's what you're seeing right now. God. <laughs> this is God appearing as all of this stuff, you see? You didn't have to get rid of all this stuff. You get to have both. You get to have the singularity. Here is this one being, the being of life. One being. And you get to have all this stuff. You didn't have to negate anything. It's instantly integrated. You don't have to have a trip leave the world of form and discover the formless, undivided, absolute reality, and then come back to the world of form and figure out how the hell does this relate to that and try to integrate them. Here are both, right here, both worlds, if you will, both sides of that dial, 
simultaneously here. I mean, it's not really like that, like a dial. I mean, it's ridiculous to describe it like that. It's so weirder than that and less explainable than that. But but here is being, being everything. You could say, you know, what's the relationship between this side of the dial, the the the, the singularity, the one ocean, and all of this stuff of our lives, the complexity of our lives, what's the relationship between them? Well, in some sense, it's very quite, it's quite simple. The relationship is, is that this singular being, this singular miracle of life, of pure mystery, is all of this complexity. It's not a dichotomy, you see. Your life is the absolute reality. Your little life, so-called your relationships, your work, your triumphs and tribulations are this vast, boundless, undivided, absolute reality, right? You feel that? And feel yourself for a moment as an individual wave of existence. So here I am, John, I can feel that sense of individuality, like how from one perspective, I'm this phenomena and I'm separate from, I see, you know, David on his little box, you know, and I know David and I can feel that sense of the wave of John, you know, and if Dave and I were speaking, um, you know, the two waves interacting, right? This is a way to experience life that we know quite well over here on the side of the dial. So this wave, I'll speak for myself, of John, is both, can be felt as this autonomous individual creature. And I can also look right now and you invite you to look right now and see the wave of you is already completely a thousand percent dissolved in the ocean. <laughs> you never left the ocean. You're already dissolved. <laughs> the wave is already, doesn't have to do anything to become the vast sea, it's already dissolved in and as the sea of reality. So there's no drugs necessary to dissolve the individuality, just see that it's already dissolved. And there's already just one thing here that dances and appears as a multitude of things. That's this beautiful dance. It's remarkable, magical dance of, of form. I mean, incredible, isn't it? Absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful sometimes exceedingly challenging it would seem for sure but yeah the the all these waves that seem to have this independent existence autonomous you know appearing in interaction and relationship with one another like us all of us right now at the same time, all these waves already dissolved in this single sea, as this single sea, this sea of being, this fundamental basis of everything. Every wave, pure being. Every thought, pure being. Every feeling and emotion, pure being. Every sensation, pure being. This isness, this vitality. So in that sense, we're already totally pinned on this side of the dial, like dissolved, nothing here, no elaboration, just being fathomless, mysterious being, which you could never say what it is, but we could call it being. You're all the way over here and you're all the way over here at the same time in this complex human existence. This one C that gives rise in its movement as all of this wave-like phenomena. No dichotomy, 